All right, guys, let's see how we can install Python for local projects inside of Windows WSL. Here we have Ubuntu as a distribution running inside of WSL. And in our directory, we have a Python file and a data to be read and processed by this file. So the first thing we would like to do is to create one virtual environment. So with this command, Python 3 minus M virtual environment, we say which directory to use as a placeholder for our virtual environment. This means that everything that we would like to install and run will be kept inside of this environment. This is done because the system already uses Python and we don't want to overload it with additional libraries. So as you can see, we need to install also a helper for the virtual environment, installing it. Now let's continue with the creation of virtual environment. And after this command, we'll see that we have a folder called VNV. And actually here we'll be having our libraries and packages installed. Okay, now we would like to run Visual Studio Code in order to open up the Python file. Since we are in WSL, automatically we will download server for the Visual Studio Code in order to be able to use the graphical environment between Windows and Linux. And we are asked whether we trust the authors of the repository. So that's Visual Studio Code running inside of WSL. We can check this from here on the left bottom corner and we see running in Ubuntu preview. All right, so we open up our file. Then we see that the language is automatically recognized here. That is Python and we're advised to install some Python extensions from Microsoft. We are looking to install it under WSL and we go back to the code. Now we'll open a terminal here and we see several libraries that we need to install. Now let's see how we can do this. As you can see, we are using our virtual environment and inside of the bin directory, we have the Python interpreter and with a minus M, we can execute a command and here we're using pip to install scikit optimize. So as you can see, most of the libraries will be installed the following way. We just need to replace the final library that you'd like to install. And this of course will put the installation inside of our virtual environment. As you can see, the packages are being downloaded, installed and configured. Now when ready, we should be able to see inside of the libs the different uh, libraries that we have installed in the virtual environment. And as you can see, this is the new library package that has been installed. This is just for informational purposes. So if we go to the bin part, we will see that we also have here installed pip. This means that we can shorten our command and we can use directly pip install and then the package name. Let's continue with the next package. So we see pandas and we will install it the same way. We continue with matplotlib. And now we'll try to run the project. Again, we'll use the Python binary from the virtual environment and we'll point it to our file to optimize.pi. Let's run and we'll see whether it will work. Here we're trying to optimize certain function and after the fifth set, we should be able to have a solution. And because in the end we are showing on a graphic, we need to install also some graphical modules. So we'll install PyQt6, which will enable our program to render properly the graphics when we're using matplotlib. Here we're using the library. So that's why we did this external package. Let's again run the code. And then we see that we are missing libxcb uh, cursor. So let's try to install it. And again, run the program. As you can see, we are able to plot a graphic on the screen using the Qt platform. There is one more step, of course, for this to function correctly. So you need to download and install VCX serve open source X server for Windows in order to be able to show graphical programs on our Windows part, which are running on the Linux part. When ready, when you have the installation, we need to disable the access control on the Windows part of the server. So we go to the directory of the VCX server and we are launching it with xlaunch. Then on the third screen, we can click on disable access control, next and finish. This will launch our server, which will stay in the background waiting for traffic. So let's run again our program now. And we are able to see this graphic popping up. All right, thank you for watching. And if you have enjoyed the tutorial, please subscribe to the channel.